Hi guys, welcome to Sim Live. My name is Kiki and I created Padme Amidala in The Sims 4. And unlike my usual creator sim videos, I decided to do a voiceover for this project as it came with great successes, but also with some horrendous failures. <laughs> I certainly learned a lot along the way. Uh, I started off with the face paint. I'd never created makeup, face paint or a skin before. Uh, but with the help of some tutorials, I thought I'd give it a go. Now, this was definitely one of the successes. Even though the tutorials weren't compatible with my version of The Sims 4 Studio, I still managed to make a fully functional face paint. And I often just select one side and then copy and flip it to create symmetry as I did with her lipstick. And uh, I'm just using the female template as a guide where the makeup goes on her face. And I'm just hoping for the best really. Uh, and it turned are great actually and right now I'm using that uh, square selection tool to measure the distance between the dots on her face to make sure those are symmetrical as well humans in real life aren't symmetrical but sims are so there you go and I made four swatches with various degrees of opacity so you can choose how thick you want her makeup to be so next up was the headpiece, and if you're unsure by now, I was trying to recreate the outfit Padme wore during the peace parade in The Phantom Menace. Uh, I'd never made a piece of jewellery before, uh, but this headpiece was definitely a success. Um, I based it off a pair of earrings, so to make sure that I'd be able to attach it to the bones of a head, unlike basing it off a necklace for instance. Um, I just sort of opened Blender, started faffing about, and again hoping for the best, and it turned out great! It was slightly less detailed than the original, but is certainly very similar. And in game, it's very shiny as it's retained the earring specular properties. And again, I'm using um, the mirror modifier a lot. So I only have to make one side and then I mirror it and flip it to create a symmetrical piece. And to be honest, I only know about 1% or less about how to use Blender, which is why I tend to have to do a lot of things manually rather than just using a modifier. And also why I'm generally quite lost while using the program. <laughs> I mean, I, I only know about 10% of how Photoshop's work. Uh, Photoshop's? About how Photoshop works. Uh, yet I'm always, always able to create exactly what I have in my head. Like, no limitations. Not so much with Blender. <laughs> it's definitely been a learning curve uh, but this headpiece is definitely a success uh, although well it's not slider compatible meaning that if you have a sim with a forward protruding forehead the headpiece will disappear inside your sims head um, but oh well <laughs> so be it um, I'm using blender to create a 3d object but blender obviously is a 2d medium so I'm having to swivel around quite a lot back and forth back and forth again to make sure that I'm placing the objects where I want them to go uh, which isn't great when you speed the video up again because it can be a bit nauseating uh, but you don't really want to watch me place these bits and bobs in real time it honestly took hours So next up is the hair. I created three hairstyles in total. Well, actually four, but one of them failed horribly, so we won't mention that one. <laughs> uh, I really love creating hairstyles. I'm managing to create more and more complex ones every time I Franken mesh one. Uh, the one I'm creating on screen for you here is the unique five crescent bun in a star shape, as seen at the Peace Parade in The Phantom Menace as well. I'm kind of guessing what the back looks like because I couldn't really find a clear picture of it mainly because the parasol on the costume obscures the view. Um, this was actually the easiest one of the three hairstyles that I created for her. I didn't think it would be when I set out to do this hair, but there you go. Um, the rest of the hairstyles you will see in Create a Sim 
and I'm just uh, adapting the hairline because Natalie Portman has a very oval shaped face. Uh, yeah, face shape. <laughs> Natalie Portman has a very oval face shape as well as hairline. Uh, but the hairline that this hair came with was very square. So I just adjusted it in the texture. So next up is the parasol. Now this was a success as well as absolute disaster. I really, really wanted that parasol to be see-through and I followed many, many tutorials to try and achieve that and they all fell flat on their asses. <laughs> The only way that I managed it was by using these sunglasses as a base, which means that technically the parasol's made of glass. But we'll just ignore that fact, shall we? Uh, I created two versions, one where it's attached to the costume and one is a standalone accessory found in the glasses category, but I won't actually include that in the download links because it's useless. The only place where it's actually see-through is in Cass. You could imagine my disappointment after working on this parasol for days only to load it in-game and find out that even though in Cass it's see-through, it's not actually in the game. It's not in the game! So I thought, you know what, it's fine, it's fine, I'll use it for the showcase pictures. But then, <laughs> because of the Cass background, I had to manually make the parasol see-through in the pictures anyway, because I didn't want the Cass background. <laughs> <laughs> and then another problem that I encountered through using the glasses to create the prop is that the only bones that glasses have to attach to is the head. So the parasol moves with the head. It's more like a humongous hair accessory rather than a parasol. But when I merged the parasol with the dress, uh, I was able to assign it to the spine rather than the head. And, but then it became solid as it took over the dress's properties. So all in all, there was success. Uh, I have included uh, the dress without the parasol and I have included the dress with the uh, parasol attached to it. But obviously the one that is see-through I have not included because that that's a failure. I'll just accept it. I'll tell you now, it's a failure. <laughs> I can only imagine how complicated creating these games is. I mean, utter respect for the sim creators, okay? <laughs> Next up was the dress. Now, this can only be described as a massive failure. No success there, none. <laughs> I literally tried for a full week to make this work, but my assessment is that Franken meshing is not that suitable for clothes. So I attempted to use two game dresses to create the white dress with uh, a pink cape. Again, the one that you see in the Peace Parade in The Phantom Menace. And it looked great. Absolutely fabulous. Until I got her to walk and then all hell broke loose. <laughs> it was like the dress was possessed. Like pins sticking out everywhere. It's crazy. It was honestly the stuff of nightmares. I tried so many different ways to try and make it work, but eventually I just had to concede and accept that, you know what, I'm just not skilled enough yet to be attempting this level of difficulty. It's a learning process. So I gave up on the cape and as I already created the texture, I just retextured the dress, remodeled it a bit to be less fitted, uh, a bit more baby doll shaped. I did include some swatches with the texture of the cape, but um, it has no 3D shape. And initially, I added these over-shoulder sleeves to have a way to attach the cape to the dress. Uh, after ditching the cape, I kept the over-shoulder sleeves as I quite like them. Um, the original dress does not have that though, so actually this dress looks nothing like the original. <laughs> but oh well, it's still pretty. Um, <laughs> But as the dress didn't really resemble Padme's dress, um, I downloaded two dresses by Magnolian Farewell just to have uh, some other options in Create a Sim.
Ooh, finally over to create a sim. Uh, the CC I used for a face were skin tones by Miss Blue, Whisper Eye replacement by Dangerously Free Jellyfish, Skin Overlay Ultraviolet by Mad Monos, Mouth Detail by Sims Nexus, Nought to a Lip Color by Screaming Mustard, and of course the two dresses by Magnolia and Farewell, who are absolutely gorgeous, a bit less Max's match than um, I would have liked. Uh, but that's obviously not what the creator went for. And of course, I have included all the download links in the description down below. So the parasol that I created as glasses work perfectly in game, apart from the fact that they're not see-through and move with the head. But in cast, they take a bit of putting on and removing and popping back on to stop them from freaking out, as you could see just then. Uh, honestly, it's the stuff of nightmares. But the parasol attached to the dress doesn't do that. I think it's something to do with that. I mean, like the glasses object is just way too far where it would normally be. I don't know. Like I said, I'm not a game creator. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. <laughs> but uh, I hope you enjoyed learning a bit about the process. I'm going to love you and leave you here. Uh, enjoy the showcase and please don't hesitate to contact me in the comments if you have any questions, requests or suggestions. Have a lovely day and see you later. Bye bye.